gentleman here who links with that name very clearly. And uh, he would have been quite elderly when he passed, and he passed with a heart condition, chest, lungs, heart condition. And he would have linked with your mum, and he came very clearly to bring his love to you. I feel he's your granddad. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. And who's, who's Jimmy? Do you know who Jimmy is? Can't, can't picture oh, James. Jimmy. James? I'd love you to find Jimmy, James, because I feel that there's a link in the family there for that name. Hang on a minute. Do you know who Doris is? No, I can't picture that either. <laughs> okay. I know I made a mistake linking this gentleman with Doris, because he doesn't look a bit like a Doris, as I said. But I do know that I'm in the same area here. I have a lady, and I don't know whether I'm saying Doris, Dorothy, or Doreen, but the Dory bit is right. And I know that I'm in this area here. Can someone here take Doris? Can you place the... I want to say Dory, but I know it's one a name Doris, right. right. Doris. And the young man who passed in a some kind of crash, some kind of accident. Does that make sense to you? I'm well on a program and everybody wants the truth, so you've got to go a little further. I'm terribly sorry. The name of John I want to give yeah. to. Does John make sense to you? No, but I think you've got him crossed with the last caller. It's James or Jimmy? James, Jimmy. Please forgive me. I'll let that... I'll, well, I'll have to let you be the judge of whether that makes mm. sense to you. Because, obviously, when you're trying to put a lot in very quickly, then you do get these sort of things. But he passed very suddenly and very quickly. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because I could feel something over his face. I could feel something over his face. As if he would have had some kind of... This is most unfortunate you picked me, actually. <laughs> Because I'm a slightly non-believer. Uh, but does it make sense to you? Yeah, it does make sense. That's right. That's fine. Because I just felt... And he reached out his hand. He reached out his hand. Yes, you've got my husband, so... Um, but I'm really the wrong person for this program. Well, I'm I terribly sorry you should have told your husband that. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yeah. The, the fact of the matter is that obviously through all this he's been trying to reach you. And just to let you know that he's pleased you're here. But I hope that maybe his link with you will bring you, bring you some joy that he's here with you tonight. And a lot of love. Well, I want us to look carefully at the connections that you say you made. Let's take a vote. First, how many people in our audience tonight can connect with the name Taylor? About 30%. And now, how many people can relate to the condition of the grandfather? Hmm, about 55%. So to sum up, about a third connect with the name Taylor, and over half connect with the details of the grandfather. Well, that's very interesting. Maureen's statements seem to be more general than each of you thought before we took the vote. Make of that what you will. Let's consider whether you might have forgotten other details which none of you picked up. Do people remember accurately what takes place in a reading? Well, we have with us tonight Mr. Rod Beal. Mr. Beal, you're a satisfied client of Marines, I understand. Is that correct? Yes. She did a reading for you not too long ago, which I understand you think is, is a very good reading. Yes, she did. A few simple questions, if I may. First of all, how long did the thing last, first of all? The About reading? half an hour. About half an hour. Uh, how many names, pardon me, did she give you during that period of half an hour? Probably half that? a dozen. About half a dozen. Mm -hmm. And did they all hit? Not everyone. Uh, how but, many but did they you had a similar it? sounding, like Doreen, Maureen, that type of thing. Well, uh, you were kind enough to give us a tape recording of that reading done by Maureen Flynn for you. And for your information, during your reading, Maureen Flynn tried these names. Uh, they are on the tape of the reading that you're referring to. Alan, Alfred, Alice, Anne, Bill, Charlie, Colin, Connie, David, Derek, Eileen, Ellen, Flory, Frank, Fred, George, Jim, Joe, John, Karen, Catherine, Kevin, Lillian, Lisa, Liz, Lynn, Mark, Mary, May, Michael, 
Rob, Ron, Shirley, Sidney, Stanley, Sid, and Steve. That's 37 names, and she also asked you if you could connect with any name beginning with an N or an L, and you could not do so. Now, in the ones that were accepted, and you did accept nine of the 37 that were given, these were some of the categories. A son, a lodger, a brother, a nephew, an adopted nephew, a grandfather, a fellow worker, a cousin, and the neighbor's dog. Now, but That's right I'm, out of context. I'm sorry? Right out of context. We Copy have a transcript of it right here, sir, and you may have that transcript to refer to it. And the names, I think, are outlined there, all 37 of them. You can uh, analyze anything. You can an analyze Encyclopedia Britannica. Mr. Beale is here because he felt that what he actually got on that tape made sense to him, very much so. Private sittings, one must also remember that um, a person just cannot in the first sitting be absolutely sure. If you're going to make a research of these things, there should be a number of sittings taken with the medium and over a long period of time checking the results. I've been a medium for 60 years and I've always said if I give a 70 or 80 percent perfect demonstration, I do very well. Uh, Archdeacon um, Perry, is it? Yes. How do you do, sir? Uh, I wonder what your opinion of this whole thing is. Would you share it with us? Our the Deacon? veil between this world and the next is a very odd veil and you can occasionally see through it. Not as often as mediums and psychics think, but it certainly can be seen through occasionally. But I do think a lot of it comes down to probabilities. And here we, sh we see the obvious problem, that we disagree about what it means. You gave a good example in that tape there with the 37 names. People remember the ones that make sense and they forget the ones that don't make sense. But we're all left with different opinions. Some people feel like I do, well, it's all, so, there are so many names, we could all connect up to it, it means nothing to me. Other people, when it touches something important to them and stirs emotions in them, they feel genuine emotions that we shouldn't just wash away and say are worthless. I would love to understand what's going on, but I'm afraid I don't. Well, thank you all for your comments, and thank you very much, Maureen, for taking part. <laughs> We've looked at contacting the dead, but what about catching killers? Some psychics go so far as to offer help to the police. In order to see how useful this is, we prepared an experiment using this collection of instruments which might have been used to commit crimes, and then again, they might not. Is it possible for a psychic to read the history of an instrument just by touching. My final guest claims to be able to do this. Please welcome Nella Jones. <laughs> now, Nella, you regularly approach the police with information you believe you have about crimes. The test you and I have agreed upon involves a number of objects which you've never seen before. We're going to see what information you can get from them. Are these visual images, or do you get sort of an emotional impression, or what is it? It's sometimes visual, sometimes it's as if it's um, an inner knowledge. But one thing that bothers me now, yes. suppose you were to handle an item like this, couldn't you perhaps pick up vibrations from the person who sharpened the item, or who perhaps manufactured it, or the person who sold it, and perhaps give wrong information to the police that way? Uh, the police don't often give me tools like this to handle, James. Um, mm -hmm. They come along and say, well, we've reached a dead end. Can you throw any light in it whatsoever? And I never say, yes, I'll come and solve the case. I say, I'll do my best. We have here six different uh, instruments or items or whatever. They all all sealed up in plastic bags. Please unwrap them while I explain to the audience what they are. Any or all of these could have been connected with a serious crime involving a loss of life. The history of each object is known. They've been individually wrapped until now to avoid the possibility of psychic contamination. All right, which ones uh, do you think are most likely, then? Let's put it that way. Um, well, these three, I felt, that's just a little thing. That's just a, I think, could have been quite innocent, but getting into a lock of some sort. These two, as I say, I felt glass with that one, as if it could have been used to... I feel glass. I just don't know. As I feel it, I'm just picking up glass. Not doing bad, are we? <laughs> this one, God knows why. I'm picking up a head.